blessings to all. This is your brother Joseph Herbert Jr. And I want to present another message for non-believers or those who profess to be Christian uh, to see and get insight to what the word God actually says about um, being defiled, being defiled from within. Jesus Christ is the ultimate. He is the fullness of God. He is the fullness of God, the image of the invisible God. Jesus Christ desires none to perish, and he desires none to die in iniquity. The men, like I said in every video, men and women choose the route, the broad way that leads to destruction, and many are not. So I want to take a look. But before I take a look in this room, um, last Sunday, me and some brothers after service, we went to a city out here in Georgia called McDonald. And to do open air preaching, we preached the gospel, we preached to uh, um, a lot of people out there. And there are, we had encounters. We had encounters from one individual he pulled up and you can tell that he was like he had something on his heart he had something on his heart that he would like to express he didn't like the preaching and he was just expressing from his own understanding what the bible says he, he, he's first he mentioned about he believes in God, but he doesn't believe Jesus. Where John chapter eight, uh, chapter chapter eight, chapter ten, chapter eleven, and chapter twelve, Jesus says that if you do not honor the Father, if you do not honor the Son, you do not honor the Father. And he was saying many things. He gave us. He was respectful. Of he was respectful. He did give us a chance to to talk with myself and another brother he was asking him questions but he he's, he did not believe this he did not believe this he believed he was righteous and one of the questions that he did ask he asked about um, skin complexion skin complexion uh, was Jesus black was his question and he kept on rambling on and on and on about the complexion of Jesus. Um, and we, as I'm observing, as I'm listening to this guy, I mean, this guy is so defiled from within. This guy believes in doctrines of devils. His own, he's leaning to his own understanding of how to live a life. And then we're talking, myself and another brother was talking to him from his, he was standing outside of the outside his car he was inside his car and he had a uh, he began to light a cigarette and just tell tell us about righteousness from his viewpoint from his perspective it didn't make sense of course and more more of our, our brothers came around and just listened to this guy and he kept on mentioning my skin complexion um, one of the things about that a lot of false religions, false movements, like the Hebrew Israelites, they go off from about skin complexion, which does not uh, benefit salvation, does not benefit salvation, and the thing about it is, when you stand before a holy God, when you stand before a holy God who is just, who is perfect, who requires obedience through his son Jesus Christ because like he said in the scriptures this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear him it doesn't matter about skin complexion it doesn't matter about your own understanding that you think what you're saying is right that is described pride that is described as pride in the heart of man and so we were talking to him and I asked him a couple questions 
my brother my brother in Christ also asked him a question. But it was like talking to a brick wall. So the Spirit of God put it on my heart that I was wasting the oil. So I went on and preached the gospel while the other brothers were still talking to him. And I and then later on that night we encountered an actual Hebrew Israelite. It was him by one by himself. Normally they'd be in groups, but this guy he wasn't aggressive. He was not aggressive. Um, and he was listening to the preaching and he asked me the first thing, the very first thing he asked me was, no, he asked me my brother. And then he asked me, what was the color of Jesus? Same question that the other guy asked. Am I here to go again? And then he misquoted Revelation chapter one. He misquoted Revelation chapter 1, as I go to it real quick, about where it says uh, his hair, he said he said his hair was like wool, and, his, and he didn't quote the rest of it, but I, I, I corrected him and said, you mean his hair was white like wool, and his feet was like fine grass, that's what it says. So then he asked me another question in Revelation chapter 2 of what this meant. Um, where Jesus says in Revelation chapter 2, And he that overcomes keeps my works to the end. To him will I give power over the nations. He asked that question. And he asked, what does it mean? What is he talking about? Keep his works. And so by the Spirit of God, I, I explained to him, myself and another brother, the works that Jesus is talking about is the works that he has done in the scriptures about healing the sick, about making the blind see, about doing greater works, doing what Jesus did in the scriptures by his spirit, by his power. And I went and the spirit of God took over. And so he dodged around the question and this individual, this Hebrew Israelite, or whatever he professes him to be, this guy tried to justify cursing. He tried to justify profanity. One of my brothers asked, uh, asked him a question, and and he says something. I'm like, what? I asked him, what is uh, what is uh, the word idol? mean not i-d-o-l but i-d-l-e what does that mean to you and he didn't know he didn't seem to understand the question so i quoted matthew chapter 12 where jesus says that men will have to give an account of every idle word in the day of judgment and he said i just don't see the uh the f word in the bible well you're not going to see that why would you see the f word in the bible why would it be in the bible then I ask him this, so do you think that it is wrong to use uh, profanity in front of elderly people or when you walk in the church? He says, I don't go to church. That's not what I asked you. Do you feel, do you believe that it is wrong to use profanity in front of your, your, your children? And one of my other brothers asked the question, that same question. He tried to dance around the whole, the whole question and try to justify profanity. I say, okay, what do you think about this scripture in Ephesians? Ephesians 4.29, where it says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And he said, I just don't see these words. You have words like uh, damn and hell in, in the Bible. You try to justify that. But yes, that is true. Damn is in the Bible, meaning the damned, the cursed. Uh, the word hell is in the Bible, but it's referring to the actual place where prepared for the devil and his angels. And then you have the word ass is in the Bible. Ass is describing the donkey. If you read the King James Version, it describes ass as a donkey. But the world took that word out of context and use it as, as referring or describing a person's rear end. They profane the word of God. They profane the language of God through the devil. And so 
I'm like, this guy is defiled from within. I already noticed that when he professed to be a Hebrew Israelite. Um, I can tell by his appearance. And I did not, did not judge according to the appearance, but judge rightly because of the abundance of his heart that his mouth speaks. So as, you, as I read uh, Mark chapter 7, it says, um, Jesus says, For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. What will be classified as an evil thought? Sin defiles, sin pollutes. An evil thought, you can think on things of murder, or think on things that is not holy, or think on things, you are imagining things, what would you do to somebody, or maybe you are, let's just say you're driving, on a, and you deal with road rage. In your mind, you could be cursing another person out. Wow, this person is going so slow, I can't believe this guy, he need to speed up. That is out of unrighteous anger, and that is classified as evil. That's an evil thought. That's one example. There are many examples of what evil thoughts are. And then Jesus says, uh, out of the, from, for food within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, we all know what that is, fornications, that is sex before marriage, murders, again, this is out of the heart of men, thefts, covetousness, that's wrongful desire, desiring another man's wife or a wife desiring another man's husband or desiring the, the riches of others. That's covetousness. It's probably, it's, it's almost classified as, as theft. So that's, that's what uh, theft is first, then covetousness. Wickedness, wickedness, you, are, you should know what that means. It's, it's evil. Wickedness, iniquity, transgressing, that is evil. Deceit, um, the word of God also says in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. So Jesus is bringing it to the root of what's in man's heart, deceit. The devil is deceitful. The word of God also says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Lasciviousness, this is also in the heart of those who are not converted, those who are not born again. Lasciviousness is provoking lust is pro you, a, a person he or she um, um, women have it on more than men because women know how to uh, women were created to be beautiful uh, a woman will wear something that is that will shape like reveal the shape of their figure and it will and by the way they walk and act it will cause men to stumble and put lust in their heart. So the other person is imagining lust. A person could be dealing with uh, pornography and having sexual images in their mind. And by, because this person is wearing something lustful and provocative, that is classified as lasciviousness. An evil eye, blasphemy, pride. We all know what pride is. Pride is. That's the same thing that got the devil kicked out of heaven. And foolishness. So I, you know, the Lord hates foolishness. And I, if you read about the parable of the ten virgins, five were wise, five were foolish. The foolish was not prepared, the wise were prepared. And, and it says, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. Now, I'm gonna go, with, I'm gonna go to Revelation chapter, I believe it's 19, the end of 19. No, not the end of 19. The end of 20. Who's the end of 20? Uh, let's see. One second. Uh, let's see. It's the end of 19. And I saw the dead, small and great. Hmm. It is in 19. No. My apologies, brothers and sisters. It is the end of Revelation 21. It says this. 
Now that notice I titled the video uh, defilement about it's it's about defilement. And Jesus described. I read to you what uh, what describes defilement from within because the heart again is desperately and deceitfully wicked and above all things who can know it. So in Revelation towards the end of Revelation 21, it talks about uh, the New Jerusalem. And it says in verse 27, and there shall in no wise enter into anything that defiles. That's the first thing, that defiles. So if your heart is defiled, bound by sin, bound by lust, bound, bound by murder, bound by envy, bound by lasciviousness, bound by what Jesus described in Mark chapter 7 and in other passages in the Gospels. And there shall in no wise enter into, into it anything, he's talking about the glory of the Lord, that defiles neither whatsoever works an abomination. Abomination is disgusting before the Lord of glory. The Lord hates six things that the Lord hates, yet seven are an abomination to the Lord. Uh, or makes a lie the lie comes from the devil therefore if you act like the devil you cannot enter in so the things that defile a person it came from lucifer it came from the devil and they're showing no wise enter into anything that defiles neither whatsoever works an abomination or makes a lie but they which are written in the lamb's book of life so is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You want to make sure that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because if, you, if you're if dealing with things that defile the temple of the Holy Ghost, the Word of, the word of God describes, and it also says in 1 Corinthians, uh, I believe it's chapter 2, or might be chapter 3, let me make sure let me double check because this is the final authority. This is the final authority. The word of God is true. From Genesis to Revelation. And it's God breathed. Uh, that? Right here, chapter 3. It says in verse 16 and verse 17. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? He's asking a question. But it says this in verse 17, if any man defile the temple, pollute the temple of God, pollute the temple, whether it's drunkenness, whether it's you're dealing with murder, you're dealing with lasciviousness, you're smoking and uh, destroying what God has given you. You only get one body. You only get one pair of, uh, two pair of, uh, there he goes, uh, a pair of eyes. You only get one nose, you only get two ears, you only get, you get one body. God has given you one body, but if you defile it, the word of God says, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no man deceive him. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he takes the wise to their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. So yeah, Paul is talking about, um, you know, the main thing about that is uh, if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy it. Like if you do, if you smoke, God will deal with you and, and give you over to your your desire and allow you to have cancer, a lung cancer. If you if you are given over to drunkenness, if you're given over to drunkenness, God will give you over. If you love to drink, to drunkenness, God will give you over. And as you are drunk, you are allowing demons. You are allowing demon spirits to have control over your life. You are opening the doors for demon spirits. Um, if you are dealing, if you are dealing with murder, you may like to watch violent movies that influence murder in your heart. You may like the Terminator. You may like. Uh, I mean, I don't watch violent movies, of course, but 
from what I can remember growing up, uh, Commando, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, he made a lot of movies that influenced violence. Uh, or you, you may you, you may like to watch wrestling. You may like to watch the UFC. You may to, like to watch sports that are violent, um, that influences violent behavior in your heart. You may love to be aggressive. That comes from watching the things. And guess what? These things defile your temper, and you will deal with them. You will. You may profess to be holy, you may profess to be a Christian, but your heart loves these things and that defiles you. God is looking for clean hands and a pure heart. What is pure, Brother Joseph? The pureness of the Lord is his holiness. The Lord commands to be holy for the Lord your God in heaven is holy. And Jesus made the example through the Gospels. Jesus Christ washes you clean when you repent, when you turn from your wicked ways, wicked thoughts, wicked uh, things in your heart, and ask the Lord to purify you and turn from your lifestyle that rejects God. Give your heart, mind, and soul and strength to Him. God will change your desires. He will give you a new heart with new desires. You begin to hate the things that God that God hates and love the things that God loves. And get baptized, every one of you, water and spirit. A lot of people will get it confused. A lot of professed believers will get uh, baptism, just water baptism, as the the. Uh, salvation uh, that they're saved but then they live ungodly lifestyles they live a lifestyle that rejects God they live a lifestyle that rebels against God they are one way in church or one way in the presence of brothers and sisters but another way behind closed doors they do things that they believe that God does not see how can you say how can you say God will not see me what I'm doing. What goes to your mind when you watch stuff that defiles you? What goes to your mind? Do you believe, do you actually believe that the Lord does not see you? Do you actually believe that what you're doing is justifiable? No, the Lord is holy. The Lord is righteous. The Lord is perfect. Jesus Christ wants you saved. Jesus Christ wants salvation. Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. You must enter through the straight gate. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many are on it because straight is the gate and narrow is the way, meaning difficult is the way that leads to life and few that be that find it. You want to be the few that finds it, and that person is Jesus Christ. That way is Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And, um, you know, he uses people to preach the message of Christ Jesus, to preach the gospel. The gospel means good news. You must believe that he is. God will save you. I guarantee you. He did it for me 11 years ago. I used to deal with a lot of things. But now I am redeemed because I believe what this say. And Jesus makes it very clearly in uh, many passages in the gospel. Let's go to John chapter. Let's go to John chapter 14. I love the way it says this in here. I'm going to start off in verse, uh, verse 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And he's not talking about anything that's wrongfully desirable. He's asking anything according to his will. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter. He's talking about the Holy Ghost, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth is the Holy Ghost, whom the world cannot receive. If you are defiled from within, if you are, if you love ungodly things, if you do things that, that God 
that God absolutely hates, that absolutely despises. You cannot receive the Holy Ghost unless you turn from your ways, unless you repent. Because it seems because it sees him not, neither knows him. The spirit of truth, I'm gonna read again. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him. But you know him. He's talking about the believers. For he dwells with you and shall, and shall be with you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while and the world sees me no more. But you see me because I live. You shall live also. At, the, at that day, you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Let's talk about three part beings. Holy Ghost, Son of God, Jesus Christ, and the Father. All these three are one, and he's talking about these things abiding in you. So about these things abiding in you. So, and he also says this. Now, this is, it made me think about holiness. He says, he that has my commandments and keeps them, meaning he that keeps my commandments, he that obeys me, he it is that loves me. So if you are obeying Jesus, it is a manifestation that you love Jesus. You can't say that you love Jesus and not obey him. He it is that loves me, and he that loves me will be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. How will he do that? And that's what uh, Judas, not Iscariot, asked that. How will you manifest yourself to us? Um, so, I'm going I'm to answer that in a few minutes, but I'm gonna, I want to expound on this right here. Verse 21. Now, again. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he, he it is that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved of my Father. So, again, a person cannot say that I love Jesus, or I love God, or I believe in God and not Jesus is not loved of the Father, because it says so. It says so right there. It says so right there. Jesus said it, the red letter words. He that you see, he will be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So when you when you believe on the Son of God of the Most High, Jesus Christ, turn from your wicked ways and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This is the manifestation that Jesus is talking about, that he will manifest himself to you, and then he will be in you. And if you live a lifestyle of obedience to God through Christ Jesus, you will be blessed. Jesus answered uh, Judas, not Iscariot, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our abode with him. I mean, the Spirit of God will be living in you if you are born again. If you live a lifestyle of, of, of godliness in Christ Jesus, a lifestyle of holiness and obedience to him, they, the Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost will be living in you. And the Word of God says in 1 John, Greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. He that loves me not keeps not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken to you, being yet present with you. So he that loves Jesus not keeps not his sayings if you don't if you say you love jesus but your actions shows that you do not love jesus guess what it is plain as day you do not love jesus you must obey him these are the works that is jesus is talking about the obedience is better than sacrifice and it's in verse 26 but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I said to you. The Holy Ghost will teach the believer all things. Meaning, seminary school is not a, 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 a substitute. Other doctrines, Mormonism is not the substitute. Mormonism cannot teach you. It's a doctrine of devils. Jehovah's Witnesses, their doctrine is a doctrine of devils. The Hebrew Israelite movement is a doctrine of devils. It will not comfort you. It will lead you to nothing. 
you have knowledge that's puffed up but no evidence zero evidence that you have salvation that you live a lifestyle of righteousness and you try to justify cursing you try to justify your actions that is wrong in the sight of the lord you're going to have to give an account of it and it describes that you have not the truth in you the same way that the devil has no truth in him because he's the father of all lies but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he will teach you all things the holy ghost will teach the believer the truly born again christian all things through the word of god if you love jesus keep his commandments if you love jesus obey him and this is not brother joseph's own words this is the words of the son of god the son of the most high god will you obey jesus will you obey the lord god the most high the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end the first and the last the one who is coming in the clouds wow and every eye will see him even they that pierced him and all the nations will well because of him will you obey him the one who is coming back at an hour no one expects but the father only will you obey jesus christ the almighty is he your strong habitation is he your strong defense <sighs> is he your refuge your protector because he protects you from all evil he protects you from all evil not saying that you'll be free from the evil around you but when you obey jesus and remain faithful to the end endure to the to the end the lord will protect his people yes trials and tribulations occur but how do you deal with that trials and tribulation how do you deal with adversity do you respond according to the word of god by obeying jesus or do you respond your own way do you lean to your own understanding do you rely on other doctrines that are false and heretical the word of god says in hebrews 13 and 9 says be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace and not with meats that have not profited them who have been occupied with it that's what it says meaning your heart is set on another doctrine it will not profit you nothing it is vanity it is vain it is futile the lord despises it the lord the, the word of god says in ecclesiastes chapter 12 um many much studying in many books uh wearies the flesh that's what it says so you're wasting your time being puffed up with knowledge and other doctrine it is vanity everything apart from christ is futile everything that leads in other ways or tries to make a way to heaven is classified as a thief and a robber and you will be defiled from within if you go in that direction in every other direction everything in this life is futile and vain except the path that leads to christ every other thing that leads to your own way the word of god in, in psalms chapter 1 verse 6 says the way of the ungodly will perish the lord desires you not to perish this is brother joseph herbert jr this is for his glory